Raja Kannan Gopalakrishnan. He was working as a senior architect at Engineering Design Research Center L&T Construction, India's largest construction company. He's also worked on projects ranging from institutional buildings to international airports, apartment complexes to aircraft hangars. He's also attended 3 international conferences and 2 national conferences and has also presented technical papers at the Jawaharlal Nehru University Delhi and the MSRIT Bangalore he's also won the national championship at Archimen at the India's largest architecture quiz sir kannan gopalakrishnan currently runs a design firm habitat design studio and he is also a visiting faculty at the renowned architecture schools in tamil nadu Welcome back to UGC lecture series this is AR6602 history of architecture and culture 6 we are in unit 2 we are dealing with what happened in architecture after modernism we are in lecture 8 if you could remember the previous lecture we saw charles moore and his works on postmodern classicism how he developed it and we saw some of the interesting projects done by charles moore and five principles of architecture that he had written for himself and for fellow postmodernists today in this episode we'll be looking at the urban aspects of architecture which were dealt with the postmodern era and we will be looking at two important movements one movement was started by paulo soleri and the other movement was started by a group of six people called archigram we have a lot of ground to cover this episode so let's straight away move to paulo soleri soleri was an italian american architect he established Arcosanti and the Educational Cosanti Foundation. I'll tell you what Arcosanti and Cosanti are in due course of this lecture. So right now let's concentrate on the early life of Soleri. He was a lecturer in the College of Architecture at Arizona State University and he was a recipient of a National Design Award. He died at home of natural causes in 2013 at the ripe age of 93. He has done so much to architecture and urbanism. We will be able to see the extent of what he has done in his Arcosanti project. He adapted ceramics, industry processes that he learnt at his time to use in his award-winning designs and production of ceramic and bronze wind bells and silt cast architecture structures that he designed for Arcosanti. For more than 40 years, All the proceeds are from the sales of the wind bells have provided funds for the construction just to test his theoretical work. He has done so much of theory and he makes so much of wind bells and ceramics and everything to sell them and to get the profit only to use it for the construction of all this theoretical work. The ceramic bells and bronze bells are still being produced and sold at Arcosanti and Cosanti Foundation in Arizona. According to Paolo Soleri in nature as an organism evolves it increases in complexity and it also becomes a more compact or miniaturized system similarly a city should function as a living system arcology the architecture and ecology as one internal integral process is capable of demonstrating a positive response to the many problems of urban civilization namely population pollution energy and natural resource depletion food scarcity and quality of life our college recognizes the necessity of the radical reorganization of sprawling urban landscape into dense integrated three dimensional cities in order to support the complex activities that sustain human life the city is a necessary instrument for the evolution of human kind arcosanti is an experimental town and a bell casting community that paulo soleri developed and he began construction in 1970 in Arizona in the middle of a desert he used the concept called arcology which he designed himself he mixes architecture and ecology together and he demonstrates how urban conditions could be improved by minimizing the destructive impact on earth he had taught at various schools so that means that he had generations of architects and urban designers and students who had worked with him studied with him there when he built the town the final aim of the arcosanti is to explore the concept of archaeology and prove that 
by combining architecture and ecology he can make a difference in human life the town has goals of combining the social interaction and accessibility of urban environment with sound environmental principles such as the minimal resource and access to natural environment the project is building an experimental town on 25 acres of a 4000 acre land preserve many features are particular to the design and construction of arcosanti for example tilt up concrete panels are cast in a bed of silt acquired from the surrounding area giving the concrete a unique texture and color that helps it blend with the landscape this was the concrete panels that they were talking about most buildings are oriented southward to capture the sun's light and heat roof designs admit the maximum amount of sunlight in the winter and minimal amount of sunlight during the summer the bronze casting apse is built in the form of a quarter sphere or semi dome the layout of the buildings is intricate and organic rather than a city grid with the goal of maximum accessibility to all elements and a combination of increased social interaction and bonds together with privacy for the residents the apse is an architectural term for a quarter sphere this was built between 1971 and 73 this huge ceramics apse serves in the production of ceramic wind bells and tiles at arcosanti the east and west communities began in 1972 and completed in 1974 east housing has been used as a shade housing the construction process was a combination of poured in place concrete and precast panels the vaulted ceilings here you can see the vaulted ceilings a part of it they decorated with large silt cast designs and the bathroom floors are done with ceramic murals made on site living quarters are clustered in a honeycomb of sparse minimalist apartments all virtually identical the buildings and walkways are built in a more dynamic formation than a conventional city grid the building was not just to built to conserve natural resources but to also encourage the increased social interaction between the residents and the people who are there in the city they have to be meeting each other the design is des- design is made in such a way that they have to bump into each other at some point of time and in one of the various open air atriums gardens greenhouses or just patios the open design the overall design is completely kept open and remarkably networky creates a nice communication vibe between the people the entire population is mostly polo celery fanatics and bell casting artisans but uh, even when the community is being thrown upon to outside people the same kind of architecture should work because it had work for these people according to the design the city has never been finished the intended population for the city is around 5000 whereas the current population is only 80 the overall design can be seen in this picture here these are the underground structures that house the entire cities so the plan at various levels which he has drawn and this is the structure various level plans level 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 uh, various level plans and these are the sketches that solari had made for arcosanti 5000 take a look at his designs and the playful way in which he has tried to create the whole building process look at the play of colors and look at the natural earth tone colors that he has used for his buildings so the ceramics that they make at arcosanti some of the models and sketches that he had made and a few of the buildings which got realized in the process of making it this is cosanti site plan cosanti is another organization which paulo solari created these are some other pictures from cosanti you can see the similarity in architecture in arcosanti and cosanti this is the studio of architect paulo solari you can see how gracefully and how beautifully he has designed his own studio this was paulo soleri the architect who had designed a city for 5000 people and he designs high density city communities where people talk to each other people behave like relatives and friends in a community and it uses very minimal footprint of land so this is what paulo soleri 
thinks of a futuristic city. But thinking of futuristic cities, there was another group or rather a very interesting group of people. They were called the Archigram together and let's see what they have to say in terms of city building for the future. Archigam, the logo designed by the proponents. Archigam, it pretty much dominated the entire architectural avant-garde in the 60s and 70s with its beautifully playful pop-inspired versions of technocratic future after it was formed by a group of London architects in 1961. This was the cover of the magazine Archigram. You can see how interesting they have made the cover of the Archigram magazine. These were the six people that were responsible in starting the Archigram. Warren Chalk, Peter Cook, Dennis Crompton, David Green, Ron Heron and Michael Webb. Let's take a look at how this Archigram term came into existence. The name Archigram came from the word architecture and telegram. They refused these two words together. It's a portmanteau word of architecture and telegram. Uh, it started as a homemade magazine. It was sent as free magazines. It was designed to explore all the new projects and new ideas of thinking and that were coming to place in the beginning of 1960s and even 1970s for that matter. They were overturning the strict idealistic modernistic principles of the 1950s. So they were changing into what they call themselves the Archigram. So there were a few things which were inspiring these Archigram people. One was the space race. Another one was the advent of technology. Then there were these lot of medicines that were developed and cures for a lot of illnesses, advancement in medicine the dawn of digital revolution, consumer boom that was led by the United States. And these are some of the aspects which puzzled these people and they started creating spaces and cities, imagining what if these five concepts grew rapidly in human civilization. So they gave imaginative solutions to a city that had a lot of technology, a lot of space race, digital revolution, consumerism, cars, high-speed moving cars, space vehicles and um, destruction. Once there is a war and destruction, what would the people do for a living? And they thought of all those things in their archigram. Some of the famous projects that they had designed in terms of cities for the future are walking city, plug-in city and instant city. And in all these walking city, plug-in city and instant city, they use a lot of pods, capsules, life like mega structures, temporary structures, inflatable structures and they always have high speed cars, futuristic furniture, futuristic gadgets and clothing. Their fundamental aim was to completely replace what we were doing currently, the conventional way of designing buildings and things. They wanted to replace it with all the pods and capsules that they were designing. The inventive use of new technologies that made them rethink the structural system of present day. Archigram are amongst the most seminal iconoclastic and influential architectural groups of modern age. They created some of the 20th century's most iconic images and projects, rethought the relationship of technology, society and architecture. They predicted and envisioned the information revolution decades before it came to pass and reinvented a whole mode of architectural education and therefore produced a stream of architectural thought with truly global impact. The first of the projects that we'll be looking at is a walking city. It was proposed as an idea by the architect Ron Heron and um, walking city is a huge city. It has multiple levels. It has accommodations, it has industries, schools, functions, it has everything inside this huge city that looks like a submarine. Imagine a very huge, very big submarine and the submarine is not inside the sea and it has legs and wheels which can move around and that is what 
Archigram designed, that is what Ron Heron designed as a walking city. Here this is that huge city that I was talking about. You have accommodation units, you have all the things that people need. You have helipads, space vehicle pads, everything. Futuristic design with huge legs and wheels which can move the whole thing around. His idea was when there is a destruction, people can just get into a walking city and start walking to another place and city can be established in any of the places. So city is no longer anchored to a particular geographical location. The city is now on the move. In an article in avant-garde architectural journal Archigram, he proposed building massive robotic mobile structures and these structures not only are massive and robotic but they also have their own intelligence. They could roam freely moving wherever they wanted, wherever the resources had and wherever they had manufacturing requirement. This building can be connected to other buildings like you can see here. They can be connected to other walking cities or other cities. They can be plugged and people can be moved from one place to another, one city to another in such an easy manner. Here are a few cities that are walking together or walking close to each other and you can see that there are tubes attached from one city and that goes to another city and so on. Walking city imagines a future in which borders and boundaries are abandoned in favor of a nomadic lifestyle among groups of people worldwide. One day in the near future, a city like a walking city may be realized as technology improves and advances. This means that the technology that we have is influencing the architecture. In a broader sense, the whole world are a vast amount. And part of the technology may be culture technology using new kinds of mediums and modalities, especially digital. The instant city is an urban intervention in a rural town. A zeppelin floats into town, hooks into the center and bombards the town with art, events, temporary structures, media infrastructure such as billboards, projectors and screens and other simulations. Then eventually it drifts off to another installation after installing a wide range of communications and infrastructure that hooks the town into the new urban network. The intention being intensive and deliberate cultural urbanization. This is a floating city concept where there is a normal city, normal village with boring things happening and then this floating city just appears on top, it floats into the town and it hooks into the center of the city and it bombards them with event, art, temporary structures and uh, projectors, st stimulations, everything and when it is done stimulating all these things, when it is done putting in everything, it just drifts off while the urban, the boring environment has become a very, very new, very interesting, a very lively urban network that has all cultural events happening, that has all art events happening, that has all people talking about drama, culture and technology and everything. That was the idea of a floating city. So before I see a sleeping town, so this is how it, a local IC HQ is, headquarters is there and a boring city with regular normal boring activities and suddenly they see this and people are interested to have a look at this. Hey look at this and suddenly it pops up to become an instant city and they hook up with the local IC headquarters, they hook up with all the technology, they take the equipment, they move people, there is a skirt tent that comes around the entire city, the event is happening already, the sky becomes an open cinema, Skynet unfolds, the square becomes a theater, this entire thing becomes a movie projection and the entire place becomes a theater now. Finally there is a highest intensity of activity happening here, there is an outdoor theater, there is a advertisement billboard, there is a disco happening and there are a lot of activities and seminars and everything happening all on the outdoor city. Finally, after everything had come down to the city, there is counteraction, the town has become interesting, there is a learning station, there is a 
info center and there are a lot of things suddenly happening inside the city and this floating city has left the city. Finally, the network completely takes over, it is linked through air or landline. The complete metropolis is linked to other metropolises, the towns become together. There is a national network of cities that connects all events across all cities and that is a futuristic city that Archigram people thought of. The next project that we will be looking at is the plugin city. The plugin city is set up by applying a large scale network structure containing across ways and essential services to any terrain. Into this network are placed units which cater for all needs. These units are planned for obsolescence. The units are served and maneuvered by means of cranes operating from a railway at the apex of the structure. Let's take a look at the picture here. These are a huge framework of structure and you can simply take up one thing and put these things anywhere. There are residential units, there are escalation tubes, there are shops, supply tubes, compound units, singular units, there are crane ways, heavy duty railway on top. These cranes operate at, at various, le various levels and they keep adjusting one place to another when, when someone wants to get close to another person they can simply adjust through the canes and they can just take it and place it over there. The network of the city is guaranteeing everybody the same kind of services and opportunities. So one has the opportunity or one has the right to move from one place to another. So this option of having a movable house or a movable pod or a movable environment is what Plugin City came to think of. Imagine huge cities that are plugged into each other. You can move from one place to another place via tubes and everything. Technology. Imagine how they have designed each and every city that and having to connect each of these people in a much easy manner. Finally, there is a floating city, there is a plug-in city and there are walking cities in one particular thing. And this is how they imagine the future to be. These Archigram people, they were so futuristic. They always thought a huge number of years into the future. And then they envisaged what could have happened to the future and what would happen to the future. If the medical advancement of this age goes on in this exponential rate, if the technology of electronics and electrical engineering goes at this age and if the digital scenario keeps expanding they expected an IT information technology revolution that would completely take the world by its grabs and they predicted it at 1961 here we are in the middle of an economic and IT revolution baffled by how it is taking us and those people were able to envisage it 55 years in advance. That was a visionary Archigram people. They had understanding of how a city works. They had a thought process that was so influenced by pop graphics and some schools of thought may disregard them as mere dreamers. But look at what they have dreamed. They have dreamed of entire cities. They have dreamed of the future that is about to happen. Most of the things that Archigram had dreamt of and published has become reality 20 or 30, days, 30 years down the line. And who knows, whatever they had imagined might even come true 50 years down the line. These people look at the time and they see 100 years in the future and look at what all they have created. This illustration here in the screen they call the electronic tomato and they have found out a ways and means in which a human body can be hooked on to a vegetable so that you can communicate with any two things in the world. These guys designed an individual pod in case of a 
nuclear explosion, you can get into the pod and be safe. And they talked about an enviro pill by means of taking a pill, taking a medicine, you can get yourself hooked up to all these kinds of technologies and you could be updated on all these things. The digital technology, already they have thought about the digital technology in as early as 1969. This is a simple looking thing which expands into a pod like this and people can be safe here even in case of an explosion. This is a single person space vehicle come suit which they had designed. A person can step inside simply comfortably and then they can stay there for uh, in case of a uh, huge explosion, in case of a destruction they can stay in forever. This is the kind of city that they had, they were talking about. A lot of cars, bridges, the future. Let's quickly go into the learning outcomes that we will have in the episode. We understood the life and works of architect Paolo Soleri. We understood the concepts of Arcosanti and Cosanti, urban habitat livings designed and envisaged by Paolo Soleri. We understood the brand new style called Archigram. We understood the dream of Archigram the birth of pop architecture and the visions of future cities. With this, you should be able to answer the following questions that are going to appear on your screen right now. What is Arcosanti? How was Paulo Soleri influential in building a new kind of a city? Who were the proponents of Archigram? What did they want from the society? Explain few city projects by Archigram with sketches. I hope you found the information on this episode interesting and engaging. I promise to come up with more such interesting and engaging topics for the future. Until then, thank you.